How's the royal family? I pray that everyone is doing well. Well, my royal family, I'm pissed, like many others, about the blatant racism. Literally, blatant. Right in our faces. Folks think we dumb. Folks think that we don't keep up with history. Now, our brothers and sisters in hit in um um our Haitian brothers and sisters are being quickly deported back to Haiti. And I have something I'm gonna to read to the royal family, and I have a video that I'm gonna to present to the royal family. Now I dug up this article, and if I can remember, I will pin this article. I'm not going to read it all, but this article was posted June 28th, uh, 2018. And the title is U.S. Turn Away Thousands of Haitians, Asylum Seekers, and Detain Hundreds More in the 90s. We're going to speak on the 80s. I have lived long enough where I can remember there was no um, AIDS. Now, I'm just speaking on history. When HIV first came out, um, they said that HIV was mainly coming from gay white males. Now, y'all know that I live in the Bay Area, and I was raised in San Francisco, in the heart of the Haight-Ashbury. And then... As time go on, eventually the face of AIDS, they're going to make it black folks globally. And so there were thousands and thousands of Haitians detained at Guantanamo. I think it was at Guantanamo Bay, one of those camps. I, I think it was down in... Florida, but, uh, and, and let's, let's keep our mind on the eighties. And I just said that in this title, again, U S turns away thousands of Haitians, asylum seekers and detain hundreds more. They should say thousands more in the nineties. So president, um, Donald Trump, he had a zero tolerance when it came to, um, the, the immigration policies. There were some things that I did agree with and there were some things that I did disagree with, with Trump. But we're going back. So in the early 1990s, President George H. Bush and Bill Clinton authorized, listen to this, they authorized this stuff to detain Haitian refugees. Yeah, at Guantanamo Bay, Naval base, which is, okay, the U.S. Um, maritime in um, southeastern Cuba. That's right, Cuba. I had that wrong. I was talking about Florida. But they did have thousands of them also detained in Florida, too, as well, because we know the connection. Now, let me scroll up here. So, in this article, they said they were forcing them to return to Haiti would have violated both the 1980 Refugee Act and the 1951 Refugee Convention. You know, it's like when you say convention, it's like the Geneva Convention. The Geneva Convention is rules of engagement in war. There are certain things in there are rules and regulations in war. And it's like you can't carpet bomb a country. You can't blow up hospitals and, and um, um, utility grids, even though they do that stuff anyway. So there there are rules of engagement. Um, whose core principle is that refugees should not be returned to dangerous conditions at the time. 
HIV ban overwhelmingly passed by Congress in 1987 barred the entry of any HIV positive foreign person in the U.S. territory. This travel ban reflected the widespread ignorance and the fears of HIV during the 1980s and the 90s and henceforth when it comes to the royal family. A 1985 poll showed 50 percent of Americans supported quarantining anyone affected with the virus. Now doesn't that sound familiar my royal family? We in a pandemic. We dealing with Rona. And there's hysteria everywhere. You would think that these idiots are high IQs would know how to run stuff by now, you know? No, they relying on like that one magic pill or relying on that one magic shot. So we can see looking back in history, they haven't learned a damn thing. And even in this short period of time, they haven't learned a damn thing. Okay, let me continue on with bits and pieces of this article. Now, y'all know I'm going to get the juicy parts. HIV prison camps? Yes. This happened in the 80s. This happened in the 90s and henceforth. And when I say henceforth, what is going on down now? Read in between the line, the sublimable messages. So this is what they were telling the um, Haitians. They were basically saying that, okay, the middle, the military personnel that, that could be at Guantanamo Bay for 10 to 20 years or until a cure, a cure for HIV is found. So that saying that is pumping fear because 10 to 20 years to anyone when you're going through something new like this, a disease or something, something that's unknown to, 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 to man, will create fear and so basically my royal family what has been happening is that anytime something um that we can see when a disease or something come out eventually they want to make black folk in america in any else in the world the poster child for it basically seeing that we are uncouth in America and that we don't um, ha um, have knowledge of health. Y'all continue to experiment on us. And you say, okay, yeah, that happened in Tusky and um, it is what it is. And a halfway sorry, but roll your sleeve up. That type of crap. We have fears. But see... You see how quickly things have speeded up my royal family? And look look at look what is going down since we have came out of our captivity in this short amount of time. Now that globe is being impacted by Rona. But they still want to make it the face of the royal family. So they they, 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 they got Haitians right there at the border, right here in America, you know, right there at the border, that's trying to get over here, just like the Mexicans and whoever else. Now, they're not talking about sending the Mexicans back. They want to expedite getting us back. Okay? And then them other folks on that bullshit ass war they didn't have. And then people then took that country back over. Last that I checked, 50,000. They preparing for 50,000 and don't pay no attention to them numbers and stuff. They getting them all set up. And in this video, it will explain what I'm saying. This bullshit, you know, you cannot explain this. It stinks. But I'm gonna tell you something Esau, every millisecond. Y'all always doing something nefarious to us. But check this out. Every millisecond, your world 
will never, ever be the same. And I take joy in watching your demise. Mass deportations are underway for more than 12,000 Haitian immigrants in South Texas. They have been living in a makeshift camp near the border in Del Rio. Most of them are Haitians who traveled to South America after the 2010 earthquake. The Department of Homeland Security is trying to deter more from making the trip. Activists say the U.S. should not be deporting these people back to Haiti. CBS News national correspondent Manuel Bojorquez reports. More than 300 Haitians arrived back in their home country Sunday, and more deportation flights are planned this week as the U.S. government tries to process the more than 12,000 migrants camped out near Del Rio, Texas. One migrant says he was in detention for four days in the U.S., four days without brushing his teeth, four days without a shower. With this section of the U.S.-Mexico border closed, many of the migrants tried to cross the Rio Grande over the weekend, but were confronted by Border Patrol agents on horseback. 36-year-old Haitian migrant Alex Rossier says if he is deported, he will die in Haiti because there's no security in the country. Valverde County Sheriff Joe Frank Martinez wants the federal government to do more. It takes too long to process an asylum claim. You know, the system has broke, been broke for 40, 50 years. It's used as a political football, you know, from one agenda to the next. Secretary of Homeland Security Alejandro Mayorka says the U.S. government is working to move thousands of the migrants every day to processing centers. We have sent a very clear message early on in light of the fact that we are in the midst of a pandemic, that the border is not open and people should not take the perilous journey here. In that interview, Secretary Mayorkas was asked whether there is a contradiction because the U.S. is allowing Afghan refugees to resettle in this country, but deporting Haitians in need. The secretary says those Afghan nationals have been vetted and screened and are being flown into the country, which in his view is different than simply showing up at the U.S. border. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Del Rio, Texas. For more, Nick Miroff joins me now. He is a reporter for the Washington Post covering immigration enforcement and the Department of Homeland Security. Hi, Nick. Thanks for joining us. So first off, how did so many Haitians end up at this particular camp in Texas? That must have been a very, very difficult journey. How did so many Haitians get there? Well, one important thing to point out is that the vast majority of these Haitians did not leave their homeland recently. Um, uh, a great many of them left Haiti uh, years ago and have been living in South America, primarily in Brazil and Chile, um, until earlier this year when uh, many of them decided to attempt this long and dangerous journey to the United States. Um, so a, a lot of them have been in Mexico in different shelters and, and parts of Mexico um, waiting to come to the border. Others have been in camps in Panama, and uh, many have, have walked by, uh, by foot over land through the, the jungles in Panama. So um, it's an incredible uh, long journey to reach the U.S. border, and um, you know we're seeing extraordinary numbers arrive just in the last week. And tell us about the U.S. efforts to expel many of these migrants. What has happened over the past few days? Uh, what's your latest reporting? Uh, well, really, just over the last 36 hours, the Biden administration has ramped up its deportation flights to Haiti. They're attempting to try to break the momentum of this of this border influx by um, by sending more removal flights, as they call them, to Haiti. Uh, there were three that landed yesterday, bringing 327 Haitians, and today there are three more scheduled. Um, most of the Haitians who are being returned are not being formally deported. They're being expelled under Title 42 of the U.S. Public Health Code, which basically gives the administration the power to kind of bypass normal immigration laws um, in a state of emergency, as we have with the pandemic and to simply uh, board them onto planes and send them back. 
And does this new sort of pandemic law trump a migrant's right to try and claim asylum? Because I understand that many of these migrants uh, say they are fleeing poverty or even fear for their lives uh, there in Haiti. So uh, where does that asylum status stand? Well, the Title 42 authority that the Biden administration is using essentially uh, gives the, the U.S. Customs and Border Protection the ability to bypass asylum uh, protections and, and simply expel the, the migrants as they've been doing. Um, as, as many uh, viewers will recall, the Biden administration is not using that authority on uh, unaccompanied minors who have been arriving in record numbers this year. And it's not using it on the majority of family groups that are coming across. But, uh, but single adults um, are especially subject to, to this authority. And, and again, you know, even if they uh, wish to make a humanitarian claim or, or to seek asylum, the uh, Title 42 power gives the administration the, uh, the ability to just put them on, on planes and return them to their homelands. Um, I should add that you know, the asylum element of this is tricky given that, um, as we just talked about, many have been living in uh, South America and Haiti and are not necessarily uh, being an immediate um, threat to their lives because um, poverty, for example, is not a grounds for uh, asylum protection in the United States. Right, good point. Um, so as we know, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro Mayorkas is now in Del Rio, Texas. What can we expect from his visit? Well, the Department of Homeland Security said he's there to get uh, an in-person operational update on, on what the U.S. Border Patrol and other federal agencies are doing to, to uh, handle this, this incredible influx and, uh, and to see for himself conditions in, in this camp. Um, you know, we've never seen really anything like this with so many people arriving so fast um, to a single location along the border. Uh, Mayorkas is going to address reporters um, in the next hour. And, um, you know, I think we can expect he'll get questions about these uh, expulsion flights and other um, logistical matters related to, to the camp and how the administration is, is responding. And just if you could clarify something for me, these huge groups of migrants were able to cross the border or is this an international space that is sort of a no man's land? No, they have crossed the Rio Grande into the United States by uh, mm -hmm. essentially walking over a concrete spillway. The water levels in the Rio Grande are, are low right now, um, uh, you know, ba basically because of, of seasonal factors. And that has opened up, um, you know, the ability for, for, for these folks to, to wade across. Uh, you know, one thing we saw is for much of the past week, they used that, that concrete spillway area to walk across into the United States and access that camp. The water was only about knee high. Um, Texas state troopers under orders of Governor Greg Abbott have shut down that particular path. And what we've seen really in the last 24 hours is the, the Haitians have, have moved to a different part of the river. They've set up a, a rope across the river to hold on to as they wade across through deeper water with more dangerous currents. But many of the folks who are going back and forth are buying food and other supplies in Mexico for the camp. Um, we, we keep hearing that there isn't enough food in the camp. So this is essentially a supply line going back into Mexico. And again, no one has ever seen anything like this when there's a giant camp on the U.S. side of the, of the border and people coming to and fro into Mexico to supply it with food and water and other things. Uh, uh, uh. Nick Miroff, thank you so much for bringing us up to date at that fluid situation. Well, let's get back over here. When, let's start with this. All that's going down is 100% pure racism now it's the first time i have seen and i could be wrong um men on horses with whips lashing out i haven't seen them do that to the mexicans or anyone else but you know they're gonna make a point of 
carting us off and putting us in one location. So just the visual alone, they like these niggas got to go. They full of disease. They have no value. That's how they talk behind the scenes. You know, I'm going to keep it real funky and real raw. And so now Biden all of a sudden with his full of dimension ass, now he wants to hurry up and expedite and they essentially are breaking the law. So because of the unquote um, pandemic and they're trying to say that these people are full of disease and you heard what this man said, some of these folks have long ago left Haiti and been in different parts of those Latin countries and set up housekeeping and doing what they have to do. So that further tells me there is something going on with the government that is displacing these folks. If they have been settled over there since the late eighties and the nineties and henceforth reading between the lines, you know, why is our folks getting up now running to the border like that? Because isms, racism, whatever kind of ism that you can think of. And anytime these pandemics come out and stuff, they eventually, at the end of the day, want to blame all of it on us. Even what's going on here in America. They're saying the reason why this pandemic is popping off is because of uncouth black folks who don't go get the jab. That's what it's all about at the end of the day, my royal family. So this is nothing new. But what is new is it's affecting the entire globe. So I keep saying over and over, I'm speaking to the entire world who want to exercise isms on the royal family every millisecond. Well, as y'all do y'all thing every millisecond, the divine hand is taking care of of our situation every millisecond, but your stuff going to hit you tenfold. This ain't nothing new. This is how y'all get down. You being true to your nature. There will be more to come, my royal family. So what I need you to do is render your voice with your beautiful divine words. And as always, my royal family, I thank you for your love. I thank you for your support. And with that said, Ashay.